Hi, Paul. Welcome to From the Stage Door. Hello, Rachel. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you, my darling? I'm really good, thank you. Good. So, first question. We're going to kick off with a little bit of background. Have you always had a passion for theatre and performance? I have, from the age of 12. I suppose, because uh, I was a really shy um, child. Um, I it was really weird. I used to watch the kids from Fame on TV and loved it. And then I wanted to go to the High School of Performing Arts in New York. <laughs> and my mom said, well, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So I joined uh, the local dance school in Kidderminster. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> in um, and it went from there, really. And then suddenly my confidence was boosted because it's such a good school. And um, never really looked back, never really wanted to do anything else. I don't think I can do anything else, I know, to be fair. <laughs> Who so, well, I, I'm, I am a, I'm a teacher as well. Yeah, I can do other things. And now I'm a healthcare assistant. I can do other things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so what was your first ever theatre job? Um, first ever theatre job. Oh, my goodness. What was it? I think it was Panto, Aladdin. Okay. That was my first, first job. Um, but I worked professionally before then. So I did TV when I was 17. Mm -hmm. Um, Bob says Opportunity Knox, which was a uh, the talent show. I remember one that. that was my first professional gig because even though it was a competition, we were still paid mm -hmm. to do the job, which was nice. Well, yeah. So that was good. Yeah. Oh, cool one. So, who was your greatest influence growing up? As far as performing is concerned, either in your in your life generally or performance wise or both. Um, I'm a massive Bob Fosse fan. Um, because when I first came out of college, most of my work was as a choreographer mm -hmm. and as a director. Um, and I loved every single thing that he'd ever created. So I was a huge Bob Fosse fan. And I was introduced to him when I was about 12 or 13, because um, my dance teacher used to choreograph uh, a new routine from Chicago <laughs> um, every week. So yeah, so I was absorbed in that kind of world. Um, but as far as a person's concerned, that was my dance teacher. She was, I think, uh, a big influence on me as far as um, confidence and style and just as a person, she was just so strong. Yeah. Cool. And what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, what other people think of you is none of your business. <laughs> I like that. Because there's nothing you can do. You can be the nicest person in the world, but if someone doesn't like you, they don't like you. As long as you're... Uh, kind, thoughtful, respectful, um, considerate, um, a good person, you do the right thing. As long as you do all of those things, then uh, what other people think of you is none of your business. I think people get so wrapped up in um, what people think, yeah. uh, how it's going to come across. Um, are they going to like you? There's too much energy wasting on that. No, 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 thanks. Get on with your life. Definitely, that's good yeah. for that. So when you're performing, how do you deal with nerves? I don't get nervous. Look at you. I get, I get, <laughs> I know. Who the hell do I think I am? <laughs> I don't get, I've, I've never got nervous and I get excited. Mm -hmm. Not to the point that it's, uh, that I lose control or that it's unsafe, but I, I get excited but as far as nerves are concerned, and I think because people have asked me this before, I think it's because if you know your material well, if you know what you're doing, if you know your harmonies and your choreography, mm. and you know what number you're supposed to be on, you know who you're supposed to be saying that line to, what's to be nervous about? Just go out there and enjoy it and, and tell your story. Yeah, that's good. I think, I think nerves feed on the unknown, don't they? So if you know what you're doing. You yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I've, I, I, have, I have those dreams where, um, I don't know my lines, but I think everyone has those panic dreams. Yeah. And that's not to do with theatre, that's to do with something else that's going on in your life. Yeah. Uh, but, but no, I think, uh, no, just know, your, know what your job is. Otherwise you're rubbish at your job if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> do, do something else. <laughs> do you have any like um, dressing room rituals that you do? Like you have to have things in certain places, you have to do certain things. Your face is telling me you do. I absolutely don't. <laughs> you do not. And it's because I'm not superstitious. Oh, okay. At all, not even remotely. And I watch the I watch these superstitions manifesting all of my friends, 
and I think, wow, your life must be so hard. <laughs> yeah. And um, and like, you know, I leave the green room at the quarter because I'm always eating because I love my food, obviously. <laughs> and uh, and then I get ready at the five. Um, and then I head straight downstairs. But because I'm a boy, I don't have hair to do. Mm. I rarely wear any makeup unless it's for a, a character choice. Um, yeah, put my clothes on, head backstage. I suppose that's that's a ritual in the sense that I always I leave the dressing room at the same mm. time. But that that's to do with, and I never get nervous because I'm organised. Yeah. And I see people packing and going, ah, I'm like, what sort, what sort of way is that to start a show? <laughs> yeah. I just I go backstage and have a chat with all the all the stage crew, yeah. DSM, ASM, SM, all the M's. <laughs> 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 Which is your favourite theatre to perform in? Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Favourite theatre. So you know, I do. I. Oh. Wow, that's a really mad question. I've stumped you completely. You have, you have. <laughs> there's different, because there's, there's theatres that have zero room backstage and I find mm. that hilarious. Yeah. It never frustrates me. It's just you come, you come tap springing off into a wing and slam into a wall. I think it's <laughs> yeah. just the most ridiculous. Brighton is, the, is just the worst for that. Because mm -hmm. Brighton is really, it's got a massive rake mm. and... Uh, there's, there's this huge bank backstage that they used to roll barrels down um, and it's really steep and you end up doing all your costume changes on a hill, which is bizarre. And I'm not even joking. It's like that. It's crazy. <laughs> imagine, yeah. um, and there's no room backstage and that's brilliant. And uh, I do like Birmingham Hippodrome. It's very nice, very modern, very spacious. Yeah. Um, the Royal Opera House was, after it had its lottery makeover, mm -hmm was incredible, well still is incredible, because there are four different spaces. So you have your stage playing area, mm. and then and then they'd have the next show right next door, and they'd literally lift that one up, lift that one up, move that one back, move that one in, and da 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 da. And oh, it was wow. done like that, and that's how they could do like three ballets in a week with completely yeah. different sets. That's nice. So I really enjoyed that. But yeah, as far as, I don't know, I like them all. But I, I do like smaller ones because they make me laugh. Trying to fit a set in and just watching people <laughs> yeah. not enjoying their life at all is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say has been your most challenging role to date? The most challenging? Um, uh, Into the Woods, the baker. Mm -hmm. It was... Uh, uh, there was a lot of emotion attached to it and... Um, I really, because I, I was playing a father, I tried to invest a lot of my my father into that role and that character and how he would have dealt with things. Um, and, he, and he did have to deal with things because the, the baker's wife uh, gets killed. My mum wasn't killed, but she did die when I was young. Um, so it was a lot, there was a lot going on, a lot going on. Yeah. I broke my heart three times a night and and... Well, I was all right about it, <laughs> Tell me, but, but that's that's how I felt that it needed to be done. And, and it, yeah, it was a lot. So I'd come home quite sad. I spent, I spent the run a little bit sad, but it was for a reason. So changing the subject slightly, what's the funniest thing that's happened to you on stage? <sighs> Whether I'm allowed to say, what if they never employ me again? Um, <laughs> I doubt they'll be watching it, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is this, is this not live? What? <laughs> um, what's the funniest thing to happen on stage? Um, it's usually in panto mm -hmm. because I, I'm sure you can imagine I'm not very well behaved. <laughs> um, not to the detriment of the show. Never. I'm always, do you know what I mean? And when it comes to a muck-up matinee, chances are every single show has been a muck-up matinee for me because <laughs> I do my job correctly, but I'm also very aware that I'm going to have a lovely, lovely time. Mm. Um, I'm very fortunate that my next job, uh, my friend Keris Hine is in that with me and we are the naughtiest. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, so I'm, I'm worried for hairspray because <laughs> she 
she's she, I'm playing the male authority figure, sort of like five different characters, mm -hmm. and she's doing the female version of that. Um, but yeah, when we did Panto together, she was the fairy and I was Simple Simon, mm -hmm. so, something like that. And um, and just before the final scene, we'd have to all run on because there'd been a sword fight and the beast had been stabbed and everyone just run, run on going, oh no, what's happened? As you do. As you do, yeah. <laughs> and we'd, we'd make eye contact across the stage at each other. I directed it as well. So I made this all happen intentionally. <laughs> And then and we would choreograph a routine mm -hmm. opposite each, opposite side of the stage to each other and say, right, tonight we're going to do step or change, step or change, step, turn, leak and land. And then and then just go on and do it, <laughs> knowing full well that we weren't very lit. Nobody really cared. You know what I mean? There's a beast dying in a spotlight. You know, one could really see. And every single show, but that was the challenge, is that every single show we had to work out a whole new routine mm -hmm. across each other. We didn't even do it backstage together. We'd leave it until five seconds before we were due on. And then we'd just do that. And then all, all just run to the center and drop into splits. <laughs> Why not? Why not? It's Wednesday, it's Wednesday matinee. Why not? Panto, you can get away with it. Why not? Exactly. So yeah, so there's too many. There's, there's absolutely too many. But if I get a bit giggly or if I catch somebody's eye, it's over. It's just <laughs> over. <laughs> so professional. <laughs> What advice would you give to your younger self? Um, probably, probably concentrate a little bit more. <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? I'm really not making myself out to be very good at my job, am I? <laughs> I'm so naughty. Uh, concentrate. Um, listen to all the advice. Mm -hmm. But I always, I always did, but because, you know, when you're young and you're kind of going, mm, really, whatever. Um, and because I went to a dance school as well, we were very competitive and I was quite, um, quite aggressive at competitions. <laughs> Didn't start fights, but they knew that I was there to win. Mm. Um, yeah, I suppose that's it really. Just be a bit kinder to yourself. Mm. Mm. And what would your dream role or show be? I get asked this a lot and I, I have no idea. I love, I love musicals. They're just the best thing ever. And I'm very fortunate to be able to work in the industry that I work in. Obviously not right now, but um, we'll be back. Uh, what role? It doesn't have to be gender specific. It can be anything. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. I quite like Norma Desmond. <laughs> <laughs> I like those strong women. Elphaba. Yeah. I'm Elphaba every single day. Honestly, in my flat, <laughs> I, I, I pity my neighbours because <laughs> when that moment takes me and I, I just come walk out of the kitchen into the living room and I say, something has changed within me. And then off I go. That's it. <laughs> the whole of the end of Act Two. <laughs> end of Act One. Watch her. Um, yeah, I like I like strong women. So yeah, any character like that. Cool. Okay. Have you ever done a job that's been so bad you've left it off your CV? Yeah. <laughs> End of question. <laughs> yep. Do you know what the, the thing is? Uh, it was a play and it was a brand new play, mm -hmm. so you couldn't get hold of the script or anything. And we were only given two sides to learn for our audition. Mm -hmm. And it didn't really give you an idea of what it what it was. Mm -hmm. And then we got to day one and the cast were lovely. The director was weird, but that was the first read through. And I finished that read through and I phoned my agent and he said, there's nothing you can do, sign the contract. Um, so I spent six weeks, and this was in London as well. Mm. And I just didn't tell anyone that it was happening. Um, <laughs> and then I'd be tagged in things on Facebook. And I'm like, no, I don't want people to come <laughs> and see it. Um, the, 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 only, the, the good thing about it was that I got to work with a really dear friend of mine, mm -hmm. um, which was just great. And we're traveling to work together as well because she lives just around the corner. And the other good thing is that it, because it was a brand new play, 
we are listed at the, on the like first page of the original yeah. cast, OG cast. And I've never had that before. That's so, cool. so that was really cool. But regardless, it was terrible. <laughs> and it's not on the CV. Okay. <laughs> are there any props or costumes that you've kept when you finished a show? <laughs> that's a yes. Oh my God. Oh that's my God, that's well. hilarious. <laughs> that, that is one of the best questions ever. <laughs> well, in shows, you kind of, you get given your jocks yeah. and your pants because no one wants to keep them. <laughs> um, every so often you can keep your shoes. Mm -hmm. That's a perk of the job. Um, we couldn't keep them in Elf. Oh my God, Elf was, we had the most amazing shoes, these really <laughs> soft. We were, they were cobbled to our feet. Oh wow. And that was what confused me is that well, the, yeah. what other cast is gonna be wearing my shoe yeah. that's fitting my foot. And I'm a six and a half. There aren't many six yeah. and a half men, do you know what I mean? So, um, but they were beautiful, the softest leather as well. And they were, they had like banana skip, banana skin tops because mm -hmm. they were, because it was elf. Yeah. Um, and we had silver ones for the finale and oh my goodness, they were the most comfortable shoes ever, but weren't allowed to keep them. Um, props, as far as props are concerned. What did I keep from, from Billy Elliot? I kept, one of the letters, so every single show, Billy receives a letter um, from the Royal Ballet School. Yeah. And he tears it open and opens the letter. So I kept one of those, and that's in, in a frame. That was a lovely thing. Um, that's about it, really. As far as costumes are concerned, I suppose by the time you get to the end of a contract, you don't really want to see that item of clothing ever again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's probably dying. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it, really. Uh, I can't think of anything else. That, but the Billy Elliot letter, I think, yeah. is, was a lovely thing, that's and I, and and there were a million of them because it was one one a show. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I stole or something. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did take it, so I, did, I suppose I did steal it. <laughs> There's probably a lot of them in the bin, though. To be fair. Exactly. Exactly, and it was a really thoughtful thing. I quite like having it. Yeah. That's What's been your most surreal moment performing, like your most pinch me moment? Um, the first one was at the Royal Albert Hall. Mm -hmm. I was in a show called A Night of a Thousand Stars. Okay. And I was front center of a dance routine. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when you know, at the back of the stage, there's a ramp that comes up onto the stage. Yeah. So we, we ran up the ramp. And I was, I rehearsed on the stage, you know, we'd, we'd gone through all the blocking and everything and, and had a clean up call, but of course there was no, no one in the auditorium, but to run up to a sold out Royal Albert Hall wow. to the center and start with a double pirouette mm. and like, oh, just an incredible jazz routine. I was like, what is this life? <laughs> um, the next one was in Elf. Mm -hmm. I was stunt double Santa. Okay. So I got to fly in the sleigh that took off cool. from the stage out over to the auditorium and then flew around over the auditorium and then flew back onto the stage. Yeah. And that was the most incredible thing, honestly. I, and I, I, again, I got paid to do that. It was ridiculous. And I love fairground rides. So just being up there, it was so high as well. <laughs> it was so high. And, uh, but just being up there over the top of the auditorium and looking down and waving at all the kids... Mm. That was brilliant. That's cool. That was really good. Yeah. Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> Definitely. Who would you most like to work with in the industry that you haven't already? Stephen Mia. Mm -hmm. um, and I do keep telling him every time I see him, I'm like, so when we're we doing the show, what, what show, <laughs> what, what, when's my audition? What do? Um, and I just haven't got, I, I mean, I work a lot, which is, yeah. which is great. Um, so I'm always working. So I'm hoping that the reason why I've not been in one of his shows is because I'm busy. Um, but yeah, I'd really like to work with him a lot because I love what he does. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Top five musicals. Okay. Um, Rent. Yeah, that's a good one. My number one is Matilda. Love Matilda, yeah. Favourite show ever. Yeah. And I, I, my um, my list used to change mm. on a daily basis of what yeah. my favourite shows were. <laughs> yeah. 
because because why not because i'm allowed and then um and then i saw matilda and i was like oh that's it that's it that's it for life now yeah. but then i went to see groundhog day and i felt like i was cheating on matilda because it was really <laughs> good i got I to the really interval and thought that. oh my god oh my god is my opinion changing oh my god <laughs> But it's the same creatives, so that's probably why yeah. um, I enjoyed it. I do like Groundhog Day. Um, I'm thrilled about Hairspray because I love that show. Yeah, it makes me giggle so much. <laughs> um, so what was that? Matilda, Rent, Hairspray. Apparently, I only like shows with one name in. <laughs> well, that is. Um, I like Chicago. Mm-hmm. And what have I got? One more. One more. Ooh, crikey. Um, hmm. It's going to be good enough to be in the top five, isn't it? Yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Shows. It really is, because I, I, love, I love everything. Um, wicked. Cool. Wicked. I like, I like the story. I think the story's brilliant. Mm, clever, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Right, quick fire round to finish off. Oh my god, go. Really? <laughs> Tea or coffee? Coffee. Sun or rain? Rain. Cats or dogs? Dogs. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Sweet or savoury? Savoury. Comedy or tragedy? Comedy. Musical or play? Musical. Meat or veg? Meat. <laughs> hugs or kisses hugs night in or night out night in tour or west end run Ooh. <laughs> everyone finds that one really hard because <laughs> there's so because they're completely different <laughs> I know. And, it, and i i'd say west end run because i'm so lazy i remember it used to take me um 30 minutes to get home from elf <laughs> and because me and charlotte uh, charlotte Gail would literally run mm. down the steps, at the sign out of the pastor, and then we'd run down the steps of the tube, and then we'd get off the truck. And I would literally be showered and in my bed within half an hour. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Yeah. But but tour's really great because you get to see all the lovely places. Mm. But I'd say West End because I'm lazy. Okay. Favourite film? Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. <laughs> nice. <laughs> have you ever seen it? I've, I've seen bits of it. I've not seen it properly. It's so bad. It's brilliant. <laughs> I love her. I love her. It's like a B movie and it's fantastic. B movies are always fantastic, though. Yeah. Favourite book? Favourite book? Mm. Ooh. Um, the Time Traveller's Wife. <gasps> that is my favourite. I love that. Did Good, you isn't it? Sob your heart out through most of it. <laughs> no. Every time, every time he shifted, every time I was like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. and literally yeah, like the it. last 10 chapters, it's just like, whoosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he'll be dead. I yeah. died. Yeah, that is my favorite. Last one mm -hmm. ultimate comfort food uh, Chinese. Good choice. Thanks. <laughs> 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 oh Paul it's been lovely talking to you thank you so much same to you and just yes. to uh, let everyone know I'm playing Mr Pinky <laughs> on touring hairspray <laughs> <laughs> take care Rachel yeah speak to you soon bye, bye. bye.